Hey guys, we're back down in the shop again, and we're getting ready to start a brand new project. Uh, this is going to be a jig for the bandsaw, and the first thing we need to do is make four little sliders for the tracks on the, the table for the bandsaw. So I'm going to use this piece of aluminum that came from the, the, uh, the side plate jig. It was a, a piece that we cut out, and it's, it, it's perfect. Uh, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we, we had to do was cut a section off of that block of aluminum. We cut one big section out of this block and managed to get all four sliders cut from just that one section. One thing I'd like to note here is that uh, all the jigs we've been building are made from aluminum. And then that's because uh, aluminum, especially 6061, is extremely easy to work with. It's, it's strong material yet it's it's very easy to cut and mold into whatever you need so that's our preferred material right now okay so once we had the four pieces cut to size it was time to start milling them to the exact dimensions these dimensions are critical because these sliders will fit and slide in the tracks and those tracks are a very specific width this jig needs to slide across the, the, the table without moving from side to side. They can only slide from front to back, so the sliders need to be very tight within that track. We started out by milling these pieces with the same half inch end mill that we used for the, the side plate jig. Unfortunately, that end mill suffered some sort of damage in it and it no longer cuts materials like it should. You can't see it in the video, but it's pushing the material rather than cutting it, and that's a sign of of, of some sort of damage. That end mill is either dulled or broken or something's wrong with it. So we had to switch over to a 3 8 inch end mill instead and the only drawback here is that it took longer to do but that's not a big deal. Once all the pieces were squared up we started making the grooves on the sides of the blocks. These grooves will shape the blocks into sort of a, a T looking shape and that particular shape will allow them to fit into the tracks on the, on the bandsaw table and that's why this shape is so crucial. Once we had one side of the groove cut out we just flipped the part over and cut the groove on the other side. We did this for two sliders at first just to see how they fit into the track. Okay so as you can see uh, we've finished the milling on the two sliders and they fit into the track just like this and they slide back and forth. Uh, there's a little bit more play in the sliders than I would have liked but uh, that's okay. Uh, the other side we can we can make up for it on the other side. Not, not a big deal. Um, the important thing is that they work and that they you know that they function correctly and they fit in there just right and they don't drag on the bottom which is perfect. I wanted them to slide on the top here and not inside the track here. And I deliberately made them uh, kind of short so they wouldn't do that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, as you can see, we've got uh, two sliders. I need to make two more. And then uh, we'll continue with the, with the other part of the jig. Okay, so now we have an idea of what fits and what doesn't. We made some adjustments to the preset on the DRO and then cut the other two sliders. And this time I think we nailed it. Okay, so things are coming together. Uh, we have completed the second set of sliders and they are really tight fit. They don't wiggle at all in the track. These do. These, uh, these wiggle quite a bit, but that doesn't matter. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's going to be okay for that side. Um, this side I wanted to be really tight because when I clamp everything up, it, it's going to be uh, really, really tight on both sides. So it's, it's not going to matter that these are loose. But uh, yeah, we've got uh, all four sliders done. Now all we need to do is, uh, well first of all we need to take the, the top plates and we need to do some measuring on that. Uh, and then we'll figure out where we're going to put our... Uh, our drills, our holes for the uh, for the bolts uh, for the top. So uh, let's take those plates and uh, let's do some measuring. Okay, so we were going to measure everything out on the top plates, but we quickly realized that that wasn't even necessary, and you'll see why later in the video. 
So we went ahead and, and drilled the holes into the sliders and then tapped them. Okay, so now we're done with the sliders and it's time to start on the, the top plates. We wanted to make sure that these two top plates butted up against each other with a completely flat surface. So the first thing we did was turn the plates on their sides inside the vise and mill the side edges so that they were perfectly flat and square. And once that was finished, we moved on to milling out the ends of the plates. Now, in order for the plates to bolt together, there needs to be a lip on both ends. There has to be enough space milled out so that we can not only fit the bolt there, but also fit the Allen wrench so that we can tighten the bolts once it's on the table, and then remove them once we're done with the jig. Okay, so there's a couple of things going on here, and I want to uh, try to explain how this is going to function, okay? Um, first of all, let me move these aside. Uh, as you can see, these are both sides of the side, side the, the bandsaw jig, okay? Uh, so what I've done is, as you can see, these milled out uh, slots right here, I guess you'd call them, on, on both ends. Uh, these are so I can bolt them together at each end, okay? Uh, I needed to have enough room so that I can fit uh, an Allen wrench in there. So I just went uh, four inches on each uh, little slot here, and I went a half an inch in. Or actually, no, it's, it's three quarters of an inch in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill uh, a hole in these two down here, and these two up here and I'm gonna it there's gonna be a bolt that goes through to bolt them together on either end okay so that's that's what these are for alright now as you can see in the center here there's a slot that's been milled out and that's for the bandsaw blade to go through alright uh, I couldn't just uh, mill a slot like in the center of here and have it function correctly because I'd have had have to have some way of getting the blade through there. So I needed to have some way to, to unbolt it, get it around the blade, and then bolt it together so that I could have as much rigidity as possible, uh, the least amount of space in here, so that I can uh, go ahead and, and cut my, my pieces for the side plates, okay? So that, that's how this works. Uh, let's, let's talk about these now. Uh, these are for the tracks. Alright, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill holes, but I'm not just going to make them holes, I'm going to make them slots, okay? Uh, I don't know at which you know, intervals they're going to be, uh, it doesn't really matter as long as they're close enough together, but far enough, of, close enough together so they can, they can travel as, as much as possible along the track but far enough apart so that they don't wobble on, on the table, all right? Um, but they need to be slots instead of holes, and the reason is this. They need to be, these need to be adjustable uh, back and forth on the track, so they need to be able to slide just like this uh, within their tracks, all right? So they need to be slots, and uh, that's, that's the next step. The next step is to go ahead and make the slots and then after that, we're going to drill uh, the holes and tap uh, these ends. All right? Okay, let's get to it. All right, so making the slots for these plates turned out to be quite an easy job. All we had to do was find the center of the plate and then measure out two and a half inches from that center in both directions and make marks at those points. Once we had the marks, we took the plates over to the milling machine and made the slots. Uh, to make the slots, we took a quarter inch drill bit and made a hole through the plate. And then we took a, a quarter inch end mill and then made the slot extending from that hole. And once that was done, we drilled the holes for the bolts that will go on both ends. Drilling the holes for these bolts was actually fairly easy. We set up a mechanical stop on one side of the vise, and this stop allowed us to set our center only one time. Uh, then all we had to do was turn the plate around in the vise, butt it up against the mechanical stop, and we had our center again. 
and we did this for both plates and it took us only minutes to finish. Okay, so here's a, uh, a progress update. Uh, these are bolted together now. Let me see if I can pick one up, pick one side up. As you can see, they are now bolted together uh, at the ends. I've already drilled and tapped uh, both ends, and I stuck bolts in there. Uh, these are just temporary. Um, so yeah, uh, the next thing we need to do is just set it on the, uh, the bandsaw and see how it fits. Uh, I milled the slots, okay, and these uh, sliders will be able to go back and forth like this while I position the, uh, the jig on top of the bandsaw. So you'll have to forgive me, it's, uh, it's midnight and I'm uh, just... Uh, a little bit tired so um, I'm gonna set this for, t for tonight and we're gonna to continue tomorrow okay so we've got this thing hooked up um, we've got it set on the on the table and as you can see it's all bolted up and ready to go uh, it slides across the table just like this and it goes the full length of the table all the way from end to end um, and it has just about, I would say, about uh, a little over uh, maybe 12 inches of travel, uh, maybe a little bit less than that, but uh, that's absolutely perfect for what we're doing. So uh, let me just show you what's going on. As you can see, the little sliders slide right in their track, just like that. And uh, these these uh, little sliders that I milled into the to the plates right here are for the adjustment. Now that's so that I can adjust it this way, or you know, so it so it fits perfectly straight. And that's so this slot right here uh, doesn't interrupt the blade as it's going across. And that's absolutely crucial. And and here's why. Uh, when I set the side plate, let me get the side plate for you. When I set one of the side plates and I want to cut an angle, I need to have that slot perfectly straight aligned with the blade. And that's so that the, the blade cuts, cuts straight. All right? um, I need to have the angle of the side plate lined up with that slot. Uh, so it can cut that angle perfectly without having it, you know, cut it like this or, you know, cut like this. If I cut into it and it, uh, it's off center, it's not going to give me the straight cut. So, so that's why this, this, that slot uh, the angle is crucial. But this is how it's going to work. I just set the side plates there and, uh, you know, it cuts it just like that. Now, there's a couple of additions that I haven't uh, added on to it yet. Uh, I, what I need to do is I need to drill holes on the top of this so that I can set the side plates butted up against those bolts and then I can just cut the angles. Um, I need to do uh, a lot of measurements and make sure that these uh, that it will line up perfectly with the blade uh, before we uh, drill these holes. So uh, that's next. So let's go ahead and start on that. We lost a, a fair bit of footage here, and I, I have to apologize for that. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I do know that it's definitely gone. Uh, the footage was not a, a crucial part of this video, but it did show most of the measuring we did for the top plates. We do our, our absolute best to make sure we always back up our footage, but in this case it looks like something might have just gotten overwritten by accident. We did manage to get this footage, and what we're doing here is we've taken the measurements from the side plates and transferred them to the top of the jig. What you see me doing is using the center finder to locate the very edge that I've marked out on top of the plate. Uh, once I have my point, I make a mark with the center finder, and that way I know I'm dead center. 
Then all I have to do is move in either the y or x axis half the distance of the diameter of the bolt that we're using to position the side plates onto the jig. I know that sounds confusing, but once you see it at the end of the video, you'll understand why we're doing this. Alright guys, so we just finished the last section. We just installed all the, uh, the rest of the bolts so that uh, we get the last angle for the side plate right here. Uh, and that's basically it. Yeah, this, uh, this jig is finished. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is pretty exciting because this represents basically the last of the uh, major uh, jigs that we have to complete. There's only a couple more uh, things we need to do. Um, there's, I think there's only one more jig that we need to make and that one's uh, fairly simple. But uh, yeah, this, this, this is pretty much the last of the big things we need, needed to get done in order to start uh, putting together a real prototype. So uh, this, this is exciting guys. We're, we're almost uh, at the point where we can start building. So uh, I, I really hope you enjoyed this. Um, and I really hope that you, you, you stay tuned to the, the, the videos coming up because it, it, from this point on, it's, it's going to get a, a lot more exciting, I, I, I promise. And I, I'll try to, to make the videos a lot better. I know uh, the, the beginning videos were, uh, were a little bit boring, um, but we'll do our best to try to, to, to get some good ones out to you. And uh, look forward to the ones coming up because uh, those you, you're really going to start to see these pedals start to come together. So... Uh, like I said, I, I, we hope that you've enjoyed these, and uh, we look forward to bringing you uh, so, some great, some really cool videos uh, in the future. So, all right, guys, we'll see you next time.